All right, here we go. So in order to be successful for today, uh, you need to have crayons, your map. Uh, your notebook should be ready to go kind of quick because we're going to transition quickly. And of course, a whiteboard because we are hauling through. I would like Columbus to discover America. And if we could kill about a million people today, we're in a pretty good position. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I know I haven't updated your board. I have hustled hard, though. OK. Um, with that being said, you do have a vocab quiz tomorrow, week 12, 1 through 10. Yes, it is Friday. We're on a normal schedule. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Yes. Okay, so um, you have a normal assignments on Monday. Um, by the way, Miss Roy is coming to watch her Monday morning. She wants to evaluate me for her master's program, which is fine. Uh, so she's coming in to watch, just so you know. I'll remind you on Monday, but she's going to watch you do a primary source. Oh. Yeah, I don't think you'll be shining bright, friends. Yeah. And we're doing it in a new way. Oh. You know how I told you that it's time to really start planning on your own and growing up and putting on your big boy and big girl pants? Oh, I don't care. So, Miss Roy is going to see you fail, not fail, struggle to, with growth. Wait, so we all yeah, your girl's not sitting here. You'll see exactly what it's going to be. Do you not think I'll explain it clearly? But I'm just letting you know, your primaries have changed. Your writing weeks going forward have changed. The comforts of AP World are dead. If there was ever comfort. I mean, I don't know if there really was. No one looks at me and says, oh, no. <coughs> Bennett, she's super comforting. But um, things are changing. How exciting. We gotta keep you on your toes. So you will be redoing your own primary source this week. Samantha Bennett will not be sitting here doing it, and you just get to sit there and stare at me. Wrong suggestions. Just kidding. So tomorrow you do have vocab one through ten. Um, we're doing a lecture, and we're gonna hustle hard. Monday you have a primary. Tuesday we have a lecture. Wednesday you have a test. Focus, spice, no, focus and peace. <laughs> Focus and pieces are due on Wednesday. Your map and your primary are due on Tuesday. Normal, normal, normal. All right. So today is going to go like super fast because we spent time yesterday doing this, which is just the best. So what we're doing is really just coloring and doing a couple of lines that we needed crayons for. So, looking at the front side, we are going to do Zhang He first. Now, Zhang He is from Ming, China. He is supposed to go from China to the Middle East and collect technology and science. So, naturally, the man gets excited when he starts seeing clocks, as one does. And he ends up just collecting knickknacks from around the world that has no scientific value, no academic value, and pretty much just wastes everyone's time. So, he is, I mean, he gets some really cool stuff. He picks up a giraffe. So, I mean, how often do you get to hang out with a giraffe? So, I mean, that's something to be said. So, but he is not what you would say picking up with the real goal. If you don't have Aiden and Mecca, please make sure you have them for some reason. So, uh, Zheng He is going to be a huge explorer. He's going to go and see the rest of the world. He brings it back to Ming China. But he was supposed to bring math and science, and he brings knickknacks. Diaz. Now, Diaz is going to be from Portugal. Most of your big explorers are coming from Portugal. Portugal is going to have the first navigation school in the history of the world. Okay, it's called Prince Henry's Navigational School. You're going to write it down today. You're going to learn about it today. With that being said, at Prince Henry's Navigation School, they bring together captains like Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, all these people with shipbuilders, technology makers, map makers, and all these people work together and improve ships, improve technology, improve skills. And that way, there's a huge boom in exploration because of this like think tank of exploration. And one of the first major people to come out of it is a guy named Diaz. For me, he's purple. 
Diaz is going to go and be the first one to sail around the tip of Good Hope. Now, as you see, Diaz is stopping and putting little ports in Africa. This is something the Portuguese are going to continue doing because they're the first ones to go exploring because they have Prince Henry's Navigation School. They're the first European country to show up in Africa to claim territory. They show up, they put a flag down and say, mine. Now, ladies and gentlemen in Africa, are there people? Yes. They just go in there and say, oh, I'm white. I need this port. It's mine. This is the beginning of colonialism. The Portuguese are the first ones to do it. Now, once the Portuguese do it, guess what? Every other country is like, well, shit, if the Portuguese can do it, I can do it. Now, every single time another ship pulls into one of these ports, they have to pay a tax. So who's making tons of money off of this? The Portuguese, and that is why the Portuguese are going to rise in superiority. They're the first one to do things, which means they're the first one to create ports, and every ship that uses their ports has to pay. So the Portuguese are going to become incredibly wealthy and incredibly powerful. However, it's short-lived, uh, and they'll eventually get their butts kicked by the Spanish. All right, next one is Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama, for me, is orange. Okay, Vasco da Gama is also from Portugal, except he goes to Cape Verde Islands and claims them for Portugal. Then he's going to sail around the Cape of Good Hope. He goes to Sofla, he goes to Kilwa, he goes to Mombasa, and then he goes to Calcutt. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the first white person to sail in the Indian Ocean Basin. Vasco da Gama is going to be the first person to sail all the way to India. He is going to put pack his ship full of Indian spices, Indian uh, goods, and sail it back to Portugal successfully. When he sails it back to Portugal, when he gets there, the value of his shipment is 500 times the cost of his trip. So, is it financially responsible to keep doing this? Yes. yes. So, Vasco da Gama is the first person to do it. Christopher Columbus is also... Christopher Columbus is trained in Portugal, but Portugal doesn't really care about um, Christopher Columbus's desire to go east or go west. They already have a route. So, he's like, fine, I'll go to Spain goes to Spain and says, hey, I have an idea. At this time in the world, ladies and gentlemen, everyone knew the world was round. Everyone knew. Everyone knew. They just didn't know how big the world was. So they didn't know if you would survive making it to some place, making it to Asia. They didn't know the Americas was there, but they knew the world was round. Okay? So Christopher Columbus says, I'm going to be the first one to do it. Well, Spain, who hates Portugal, they still hate Portugal today, Okay, Spain hates Portugal, and they're like, you know what, screw it, let's try, to, let's try to screw them over. So, they give Christopher Columbus three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Do you know that? You know the little song? Okay, good. And he sails to the New World. Okay, so, he does three voyages from Spain, and the reason why Spain pays for it is because they hate the Portuguese. Okay, so he does three trips. Now, his trips, by the way, I'm done. His trips are considered meh. Yes, he discovers landmass, but they thought he was just in the West Indies, which is why he calls these people Indians, because he thought he's in the West Indies. He wasn't, of course, but they didn't necessarily know that. With that being said, his discovery was not very exciting. No one really cared because they wanted him to be in India where they just have goods stacked up and you could just put them on your ship and sail like Vasco da Gama. In the New World, that's not the case. Okay, They weren't expecting white people to show up randomly in 1492. So they didn't have any goods to sell. So Christopher Columbus dies naked and alone. Why are you people not coloring in your damn map? Some of you are just staring at me like you don't know what we're doing here. 
Okay, so Christopher Columbus died a kind of a failure. No one really cared. He kind of died broke and alone in Spain. No one really cared about him. With that being said, about 50 years after Columbus uh, discovered America, then people were like, hey, let's give this whole New World thing a try. And then they're like, oh, damn, this is good. And then they go over there and they start their cash crops. And eventually, who becomes more powerful, Portugal or Spain? Spain. Spain. Okay. Spain focuses on New World. Portugal focuses on Old World. Which one will become more valuable in the long run? There you go. What do you got, um, Reagan? Huh? Oh, America. He was right around the time of Columbus. That's why it's called America. America. Yeah, he was a map maker around the same time, and he was in Spain. He didn't find it. He drew it on a map, and he put his name on it because he wanted to. Because keep in mind, did anyone really care? No, everyone was like, oh, who cares? So everyone thought it was just an island chain that he hit. No one knew that there were continents there. Oh, sorry. Uh, Slav, I didn't see you. I was uh, trying to ignore you. How were they making the maps back then? Um, like they on the coast? And... Kind of. They weren't particularly accurate. They're just kind of like, meh. They look pretty accurate. No. If you look at Amerigo Vespucci's map, it That's looks... Bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maps were just kind of, like, kind of vague. Think about it. I mean, they don't have the equipment. They don't have the skill. And keep in mind, the captains are making them, and the captains do a pretty good job, but they don't have, like, the aerial view. They don't know where all the coves are and all that stuff. So they're not particularly accurate, but they're way accurate than not having a map. Yeah. I've seen some, like, pretty accurate maps. From, like, the 16, 1700s, but not in the 15, Probably. 16. When we had people settled here and people are living here, specifically just talking about the New World because that's where we are, then you start having really accurate maps because people know the land. Like people, like if you, if your backyard was the Virginia Sound, you would know what the Virginia Sound would look like <coughs> if you were hunting it, uh, harvesting it, and doing all that stuff being on the land. So you would be able to know where all the coves are, where the entries are, deep water, shallow water, because you live there. But like these people showing up, they're like, water, entry, river. What do you got, Maggie? Do you have a question, my love? You got 10 seconds. Do any of you people use the school Wi-Fi, or is it just crap all the time? It blocks everything. It blocks everything. Seriously? Five, four, three, two, one. Flip it. All right. <coughs> this is, like, really not bad. You're essentially just going to color all the island chains we identified yesterday to a different color. You do not have to match my colors, people. You do not have to match my color. We identify, because I don't know whose map is who, because I didn't label it. Did we label the back? Did we label the Philippines? All right, perfect. I can do that right now. So these are your Philippines. These are Marina Islands. Okay, so the Philippines are all of these islands. They are, uh, they're discovered. They had people living on them. It's just white people. The first white person saw it and said, oh, I discovered it. It's a white people thing. My mom still says it. Oh my god, my, your mom, your dad and I discovered a new restaurant. Mom, was there other people in the restaurant? Yes. 
How did you discover it, Anne? She's like, oh, stop it. White people. All right. Um, you're just coloring in every island chain. Just a different one, as you can see. I'm just grabbing random ones. I'm making the islands a little bit bigger with my crayons. Like, I'm not perfectly coloring because I want you to see the groupings. That's all. Yeah, they're all the same color. What up? Um, what is that little uh, like a, I know I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. My uh, ability to identify uh, <laughs> Pacific Islands is uh, pretty minimal. You're more than welcome to Google it if you really want to know. does not hurt my feelings. But yeah, I can't tell you. I mean, I really want to go to Fiji, so I know where that one is. Um, I've been to the Hawaiian Islands twice. Haven't you been to all these islands there, Jared? Huh? Oh, you don't go to islands, you just go to continents? Cool. I don't really go to islands. Did you just hear that? I don't go to islands. So pretentious. I've just never been interested in places like Hawaii. Which are some people's bucket list, by the way. I just never interests me. Huh? I find it interesting. I don't care. I don't care. It's not like you're paying for it. Your mom and your papa are paying for it, so I'm not impressed. When I go to when we went to Hawaii, I paid for it. Yes. Yes, I paid for that. Do you know how much it, my husband paid for our honeymoon? I paid for the wedding, he paid for the honeymoon to Hawaii. And then I paid for our most recent trip to Hawaii. Which bankrupt me, by the way. Oh my god, it was so much fun. Oh my god, it was so much fun. You know, maybe not, you know, ex ex not everyone's cup of tea because, you know, it's just Hawaii, but. Ah, uh, yes, because we labeled it. I don't need you to color Australia. You do need to color New Guinea. Alright, those are your islands you need to have. I feel like I'm the chosen one. You don't think I'm the chosen one? The sun, Jared. The sun, Jared. Alright, I'm switching to the other side, which is not that hard either. All right, Incans, for me, is going to be purple. The Incans are located in the Andes Mountains. And they are located along what we would call most of Chile today, but obviously larger than Chile today. And these are the Incans. Keep in mind, the Incans have the Quipu system. They're the ones who have... Um, sorry. They're the ones who are going to have a la the Mita labor system. They're the ones that have the massive road system. They're the ones who build Machu Picchu. Is that cool enough for you or no? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. And then you have the Aztec Empire. The Aztecs are going to be over here. And they are in central Mexico. By the way, everyone on uh, the Aztecs and the Incans are the ones who are going to be destroyed by white people. They're the ones who are going to meet the Spanish and then get murdered by the Spanish. Uh, keep in mind that the Spanish are going to find the Incans only by their road system, which is a real, real awful thing. That's a terrible decision. And then the Mayans. I don't put them right over here. They're overlapped. There's an overlap here. That's it. So all you need to do is color your land and your water on this. these two maps. You're done. I'm going to give you three minutes, and then we're going to get some notes. Is that okay?
As soon as you are done, please put your crayons away and close the box. That would just be the best. You've got two, mi uh, two minutes. Some of you are acting like you, you, you're looking forward to coloring at home. But why? So my girl Lily's got the strategy. She's just hauling her way through it. It's not perfect. It's not beautiful. But you know your girl's getting all the damn points. Isn't that all that matters? You've got one minute. Oh Computer, just do it. All. So what's the plan for tonight? Is there anything tonight for homecoming? I don't think so. Is there no JV game? Oh no, she's our last one. You got ten seconds. Transitions and notes. Did we start notes yesterday? Oh. Some classes did. All right, here we go. On the top of your notes, you're obviously writing week 12. Let's go. We're moving real quick here, people. Keep in mind, your map is due on Tuesday. So if you did not finish coloring because, you know, you're just hanging out, living luxurious lifestyle here today, not hustling on the coloring, then it's due Tuesday. Here we go. On your what? Nope. On your notebook, you should have week 12 at the top. We're going to start with Portugal, by the way. All right. Here we go. Oh. We're going to continue. <laughs> I'm not going to complete that thought. Here we go. You're going to start with Portugal. You need to know that Portugal is an ocean-dependent society. What does that mean? They're an ocean-dependent society. What does that mean? Yeah, for everything. It's their economy. It's their food source. It is absolutely everything. It's the same thing today in 2019, by the way. Okay, you need to know that the Portuguese are going to claim the Azores. We labeled it on our map today. And what is special about the Azores? We talked about it yesterday. What is special, Shannon? It's the only place in Afro-Eurasia 
that has sugar, and you need to know that. Okay, so they claim the Azores, so they're the only one who has control over sugar. Can they make lots and lots of money off of it? Not really, because the Azores are pretty damn small, so they can't really mass produce it, which means they can't really make that much money off of it. However, with this item that they know can be worth a crazy amount of money, if they could just grow it somewhere, what do you think they're going to do? Try to find a place to grow it, correct? So, you need to write down that all, you need to write this down directly, all European nations are tired of purchasing goods from the Italians. All European nations are tired of purchasing goods from the Italians. So, they're looking for another way to get Asian goods. Why do they have to buy their items from Italians? Who can raise their hand? Come on, connect the previous week's content to this. Why do they have to buy from the Italians, Jared? You can't just say Crusades. Crusades have been over at this point. Who are they buying them from? They're not the Middle East. Who are they buying them from? Their people. Maggie? Yeah, they're selling. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, during the Crusades, the Italians and the Muslims come up with a system. I am going to pay, purchase. I'm going to, the Italians are going to purchase goods from the Muslims. Okay, turn around and look. Look at my map. Okay, so. The uh, Muslims are going to cross the entire, entire continent of Asia and go to China, and they're going to buy the goods. In China, are the goods expensive or cheap? If you were in China, are the goods expensive or cheap? Cheap, because they're made there. Everything is cheap there. So the Muslims cross the entire continent of Asia to get to China. Okay, They pick up the goods, and they bring caravans back to the Middle East. When they bring it back to the Middle East, do you think they jack up the prices? Yes, so these cheap items in China are now expensive because a guy walked across the continent twice. Okay, now because of the Crusades, the Italians and the Muslims have a relationship. They decide to exclusively sell to only Italians, which will keep their secured uh, sale um, purchasing line. Correct? If they only sell to each other, they make sure they both exclusively stay in the business. So it's a good deal for both Italians and Muslims. Is it a good deal for the rest of Europe? No. no. So because of that, the Italians and the Muslims are making crazy amounts of money, and the rest of Europe is being held hostage to the prices. Because when the Italians come to pick up the goods in the Middle East via ship, the Italians are the ones who turn around and sell it back to Europe. Do you think the Italians jack up the price? So right now you have a huge surcharge from the Muslims and you have a huge surcharge from the Italians. So these goods are being charged at 500 times the price they're supposed to be in China. So other European nations are tired of paying these Italians crazy amounts of money. Any of you know any real Italians? Like I'm talking like a genuine Italian. Like my family is half Italian, half English. My nanny came from Italy when she was seven, okay? If you know a real Italian, like a real one, you know their ego goes for days, okay? I'm half Italian, my nanny is like 100% Italian, I can say it, their ego goes for days. So how do you think the Italians are to deal with at this point in time when they're the wealthiest nation in the world, in Europe, not good? They're a bunch of turds, and they're abusing their power, and they're rubbing their money in everyone else's faces, a.k.a. the Renaissance. So, everyone else is pissed. So they're doing whatever they possibly can to avoid the Italians, wouldn't you? Okay? So, because of that, we are going to see that they are going to start exploration. You need to have that down. Because of their avoidance of the Italians, because they hate them, they are going to start exploration. You also need to know that Italian diets have changed. Not Italian. European diets have changed, and everyone expects pepper. Could you imagine having your dining room table without pepper on it in your kitchen? Your pepper, whether you know it or not, whether you cook or not, pepper is in absolutely everything you eat. It's in everything. 
It's like literally the basic foundation of every meal you've ever eaten is pepper. Okay? They also are going to see that ginger is going to be becoming much more popular in Europe. These are staples that people want to have. What? Explore. Okay. So, new technology in exploration. That's your heading. Here we go. You need to know the Chinese rudder is going to be used. This helps with steering, especially in tight channels. You need to know square sails are being used. Square, square sails catch larger crosswinds. So if you have square sails and you catch more wind, what happens? You go faster, yes. We are going to have the invention of the astrolobe. A-S-T-R-L-O-B-E, the astrolobe. The astrolobe is used to measure the stars in the horizon for directions. You need to know that. The astrolobe uses the stars in the horizon to measure distances. It allows for large open sea navigation. It allows for open sea navigation. For the first time, you don't need to be in sight of land in order to tell which direction you're going. You can simply use the stars. What do you got? Um, the square yeah. You also need to know the Volta du Mar. The Volta du Mar are the trade winds that are on all ocean, on, 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 on all oceans. There are trade winds. Don't worry, next week we're doing a trade winds map. You'll love it. Okay, so. By the way, this is the map we're doing next week. These are the Volta du Mar. These are the different trade winds. By knowing where the winds are going, you can kind of predict where you're going and have some sense of direction. Okay. You can, it's the same heading. You need to know Prince Henry of Portugal is going to create the first navigational school. Prince Henry of Portugal is going to build the first navigational school, which will bring together captains, shipbuilders, map makers, and technology. Prince Henry of Portugal is going to build the first navigation school, which brings together captains, shipbuilders, map makers, and builders of technology all together in one place. Okay? You need to know. Okay? New heading. Portuguese claims. Okay, Portugal, Portuguese claims. You need to know that the Portuguese are going to claim ports along the coast of Africa. Portuguese claim ports along the coast of Africa and charge tariffs on any foreign country that uses them. Why? Hello, why? Maggie. Yeah, make money. Also, do they want other European countries to start following them? No. So if they jack up the prices and you have an English ship coming in behind you, is it making more affordable or less affordable for European explora uh, English exploration? Less, okay? They don't want other countries doing what they're doing because they're trying to make a profit. If everyone's doing it, then they can't make that much of a profit. So, they're trying to jack up the prices and make it very hard for other people. You need to know Bartholomew Diaz is the first to round Cape of Good Hope. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you there's like 10,000 names on your test this week. Here's the first. Actually, second. Prince Henry is the first. Bartholomew Diaz is the first to round the Cape of Good Hope. Okay, so he's the first one to go around it. What do you got, Maggie? Wait, he turns around immediately. Okay, but then Vasco. Vasco da Gama is the first European to make it to India. Okay, so 
Vasco da Gama is number two. You need to know. He is the first European to make it to India. Okay, he's the first one to make it there and return. His voyage, the cost of the voyage, is going to be returned 500% by the amount of goods he purchases in India. He gets off the ship in Calcutta. And people are literally handing him, which would be millions and millions of dollars in Europe, for hundreds of dollars in India. They are completely blown away by how little things cost in India. And this is really going to cause a massive drive. Okay, so skip a space, Spain. Skip a space, Spain. You need to know who's... Portuguese and who is Spanish. You need to know the Spanish want to compete against their rivals. They hate Portugal. They don't want to pay Portuguese tariffs on their way to India. Okay, so they hate the Portuguese so much they'd rather not pay them a single dime. Like, that makes sense, correct? Okay, so what they do is they hire a guy named Christopher Columbus who wants to sail west to go east. If you sail west, what don't you pay? Tariffs. That's the only reason why they sent him. It is the pettiness of Spain, which is why Christopher Columbus gets his shot. Because they hate Portugal so much, they'd rather die than give them a penny. So that's why Christopher Columbus sails west to go east. Okay? You need to know that everyone knew the world was round. No one thought he was going to fall off the face of the planet, people. No one thought the wa world just ended. They just didn't know how big it was. So they didn't know if you could put enough food and water on a ship to make it. So people didn't try it because they didn't know if you would make it on food and the water you could put on the ship. Because if you put too much food and water on your ship, your ship goes really slow, correct? And then you can't make it there because it takes you way longer. But if you don't put enough food and water on your ship, you're all going to die before you could hit land because they didn't know. You need to know that it's Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain who pay for it. You need to know, Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain are the ones who pay for it. What do you got? Fernando, Ferdinand, it just depends on the translation. I'm doing the English one. Do you want me to use Spanish here? Yeah, it's Fernando, also known as Ferdinand in the English translation. All right, you do need to know that... For the first time, with his, uh, by the way, he lands in Hispaniola. Okay, he lands in Hispaniola and he hits the Bahamas. He does not hit the continent. He just hits islands. Okay? Now, because of his discovery, we have now interaction between the Americas and after Eurasia, you need to put a big star. And by the way, you need to write 1492. Like that's a huge year. By the way, we've kind of skipped by that. Hi, you need to know in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Okay, you need to know. It's 1492 that Columbus reaches. Okay, so. The Americas is now connected to Afro Eurasia. So now everything is connected for the first time in history. Good thing or bad thing for the Americas? Uh, yeah, they get some good stuff. I mean, they get piggies and chickens. So, I mean, that's cool. I mean, imagine you're, like, tacos from Mexico without pork <coughs> and chicken. I mean, that's a tragedy. But, I mean, 300 million people had to die. So, who knows? Okay. Circumnav skip a space, center it. Circumnavigation. Circumnav what is... See ya. Hopefully you find this stuff interesting at least, yes? That's the real bell. See ya!